hey guys welcome back to my channel it's me andrea and in today's video i am going to be answering a few questions from you guys just some things that some of you guys have been a little curious about as well as a few topics that i wanted to touch on and honestly i'm just using this as an excuse to make a video since i did miss my regularly scheduled upload i was in the middle of trying to make a vlog but y'all let me be completely honest so i started making a vlog me and trey ended up going to the range so i kind of vlogged that whole thing and i kind of wanted to like vlog up until the point we started second phase i don't know what happened between then and now one i was just overwhelmed just super tired just i just did not i just didn't have the energy to vlog so i didn't and when i went to sit down and look at all the footage that i had to start editing everything together i had nothing even when i tried to make something out of nothing it just didn't make sense it just wasn't the quality content that i'm kind of wanted to put out so I was just like okay yeah that's just not gonna work what can I do as backup so y'all I tried to film kind of like a chit chat get ready with me so I went on to my Instagram and I was like looking through my messages because a lot of you guys go there to ask me questions I'm like pulling out questions and I went to sit down to do my makeup to try to talk about the topics that was being asked about answer some questions until I realized my makeup is all outdated the colors was not matching my face. I have not worn makeup in so long, to be completely honest. I don't really know how to do makeup that well anymore. So it was just turning out to be a fail, okay? It was a fail. Nobody will ever see that video. I'm never putting that video out. Oh my God, it was just so bad. My makeup was not matching at all. Hmm. So I was just like, you know what? Maybe this is just a sign to just take a break. Cause I won't even lie with me switching over to second phase. I was like super overwhelmed in the first place. I had no business trying to sit down and edit video, film all this. I just had no business doing that. So that was kind of like God telling me to sit down, focus on work, focus on the mission, what I'm here for. And then, you know, you guys will be here for me once I return. So that's what I decided to do. I just decided to take a week off and um, yeah, here I am. So instead of doing my makeup, I just got out the shower. I'm kind of unwinding for the night, just finished up some classes and I washed my hair, but I did not moisturize yet. So that's honestly what I am about to do. I'm about to moisturize my hair and answer these questions and touch in on these topics that was asked. So. I think that's more my speed my range I can I can do that so if you want to see me moisturize my hair and talk about some things um stay tuned if not go ahead and catch me in the next upload but I'm about to get started so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this because I have the camera over here but the mirror is right here so I'm probably just going to be like turning back and forth but it's fine I'll figure it out one thing about my hair is I'm actually recovering from a botched silk press I got a few years back so when I was still in Georgia I went somewhere to get a silk press and when I say my hair was never the same again my hair was never the same it never curled back up so natural girls right for my natural girls, it's because my hair is completely natural so for my natural girls you know when you go to straighten your hair or anything like that if you breathe wrong and it's even just a little bit of moisture in that breath your hair is going to poof up let alone if you wash it it's definitely going to start poofing up so back then when i got that silk press i went to wash it out after like a few weeks and when i say my hair was never poofy again it's literally the ends were straight you can tell it was either severely um heat damage or these people put something in my hair a part of me thinks that they put something in my hair because when i say my entire head was like that my entire hair was bone straight not a curl in sight and it was insane i've washed it so many times i use so many like um curl enhancing type of things and nothing helps my hair so over the past few years i kind of just been cutting away like the last three four years i've been cutting away at the ends that were super straight and it was it was like over here was really bad like this over here was really bad after that experience my hair has never been the same so the way my afro used to look it was like a nice tight afro that just set up like cotton and even though my hair is 100 percent natural it's healthy now uh, yeah, my curls never been the same. I did recently have a silk press and I was honestly like 
scared to even do that because I'm just thinking to myself I don't want my hair to not be able to curl up so I got the silk press and it was perfect when I say that silk press was silk pressing it was doing what it needed to do but I only kept it in for like a week or two and then when I washed it out y'all I was so scared to wash it out because I'm like please please wash out and instantly instantly my hair just started to poof back up into its beautiful natural curls and I'm like okay good no damage no nothing so i was super excited about that i'm rambling enough i'm about to go ahead and start moisturizing my hair so what i'm gonna do just separate a little bit of this and i don't i'm not super neat about my parts either i just separate some of my hair so i'm not working with a giant chunk of hair and that's good enough so one of the first questions was how's life going and honestly life is just life in there's nothing I really have to complain about. I think I've been pretty open about, you know, the stresses and stuff that I go through, how I'm feeling on a daily and stuff like that. But as far as how's life going, to be honest, I feel like life is just in the air. I feel like everything is um, so in the air right now that it's just super unpredictable, especially like being back, back in AIT, back in this course not on a schedule or anything like that so i feel like for the honestly for the past few years hold on i'm about to take this off watch how i'm about to be cold in a second anywho um what was i life how's life going i want to say let me see the past two to three years because you know i pcs um i was i was in charlie school i became a nurse and then i was there for a year and then the following year i pcs to fort bragg I was only at Fort Bragg for a year before I decided to re-enlist again for 68 Victor. And it's just high tempo all the time. Ain't no telling where I'm about to go after this. So everything for me is just up in the air, which I mean, I guess it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's not necessarily a bad thing because every step I go, I'm progressing. You know what I'm saying? Like every step I'm taking, it's beneficial, especially for me outside of the army. And that's one of the things that I've really been focusing on is getting myself ready for life on the outside because yeah, I just, that's pretty much it. Like I wanna make sure I'm good if it gets to the point where I do have to get out. But I also want to create a career for myself within the military that's fulfilling because i feel like that's what i was missing for the longest time is like that fulfillment in my career like i felt like i didn't have a purpose or anything but honestly as far as how life going the overall picture is it's going pretty good it's going pretty good yes i am stressed out to the max my edges ain't falling out yet so i think i'm probably not that stressed out but I really can't complain because I've been just blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings and I continue to be blessed on top of all the nonsense. Some type of way I'm coming out with a win every time. So life is life. And somebody asked me about motherhood and if I want, y'all look at this. Look at that. Somebody asked me about motherhood and if I want any more kids. As far as motherhood go, motherhood has always been motherhood there's i mean i'm gonna put it like this i am not the perfect mother i am not the perfect mother at all but i i want to be the best version of a mother in every other role that i have to play in life to the best of my ability i love motherhood i love being a mom i tell people all the time i feel like becoming a mom is one of the best things i've ever became and it's one of the things that just bring me so much joy like sometimes i still think about the fact that I am a mom, like when I'm reading a report card, sometimes it'll hit me out of nowhere like, I'm actually somebody's mother. And my kids are five and 12. Oh my God, I got a five and a 12 year old now. For them, to, for me to have been a mom for years at this point and it still hits me and I still just be in awe like, oh my goodness, I just, I have kids, like I'm somebody's mom. It means the world to me. It's something about having kids that gives you this kind of, I don't wanna say superiority complex, but it just definitely reminds you 
even at your absolute lowest that somebody is looking up to you because i'm telling you right now those moments when i've been like at the lowest of my life for example with darion before i came into the military a year be literally a year before i came in not even a year it was like i want to say about six months before i joined the army i was actually homeless I was homeless with my son and I was at like literally the lowest period of my life. Like I felt like a failure. I felt like shit. I just felt horrible. But then here I am with this little bitty kid and the way he just looked at me, no matter what the situation was, he looked at me as if I was some type of hero, as if I was some type of God to him. And that's just something that you need, you know? And so now that my daughter's here, she kind of she does the same thing and it's funny to see like the personalities and the way they they they've grown and stuff like that because one thing that i will always stand on is my kids are not my property they're my kids but they're not my property they're their own people so they have bad days they have good days they get up on the wrong side of the bed they have their own views and personalities and feelings towards certain things i'm just here to nourish them and to help them become the best version of a person that you can be so that's that's my take on on my version of parenthood anyway i just absolutely adore i absolutely love it and i wouldn't change it for anything in the world as far as one or more kids y'all i have the best of both worlds i have a son i have a daughter my son is years older than my daughter and i don't know maybe i to be honest i've always wanted like four or five kids i have a bunch of siblings so it's only natural for me to have wanted like a bigger family i do want more kids i've always wanted at least three at the very least three kids at most i could do four i could do four kids but as of right now where i'm at right now i'm content with what i have if i meet somebody in the, all the stars aligned and god is sending all the signals like yeah i think you're safe here i think it's time or or this is the perfect situation or whatever then maybe i'm considering having more kids but as far as right now i'm perfectly fine my kids are older you know my kids are older <sighs> y'all need to redo my nails they can talk and they can communicate and i don't have to like do literally everything for them for my daughter to be five years old she's always been a little bit more independent a little bit more responsible than i'm used to my son being at her age having more kids that's literally you're starting all over you're gonna literally have to start over from scratch i'm talking about guessing why the baby's crying up every two hours all hours of the night you know finding a sitter carrying around a giant what is it the giant car seat a stroller a three bedroom to a four bedroom how care is so expensive it's a lot i didn't even separate any hair i wouldn't mind having more kids and i do want more kids i've always wanted at least three or four kids but as far as right now like i said i'm if I didn't have any more kids, would I be upset? No. If for whatever reason I popped out another baby, would I be upset? No, like it is what it is, you know? Where is your military career heading to an end? <laughs> I was kind of serious when I said that. It's heading to an end. I like being in the military. When people ask me if I'm gonna do 20 years, I always say, I don't know. As long as I love what I'm doing, I'm gonna continue to do it. And I also said that, when the military starts to take me away from being a mom and that's that's when i'm going to hang it up that's when i'm done and that's honestly where i'm at the military is making it harder and harder for me to be a mom and one thing i'm not going to do is sacrifice my motherhood and my kids for this career especially when i know i would be perfectly fine on the outside without it i just decided that with everything that goes on with the way i feel towards certain things how political the military is starting to get these days i am actively actively working on getting myself in a in the position i want myself to be in to get out i'm giving myself about 
another four ish years to have everything situated so my savings finishing up my degree just you know trying to narrow down where it is that i want to live because of course i want a healthy city to live in with good schools i want a decent house so i'm just basically getting everything in order to get out because y'all i've decided that i'm not staying in i'm not doing the 20 years I don't know, maybe when I get to my next duty station, I find that NCO to kind of reignite that fire in me or this job is so fulfilling that I find my calling in the military again. But as far as, you know, where my military is heading, to an end. And don't get me wrong, I still plan on being the best NCO I can be. I still plan on being the best soldier I can be while I'm in, while I still, you know, I'm in this position but as far as staying in it's just the no it's just too many things that goes on and one of the big 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 things is the fact that let me just say this article 134 I don't like it I don't like the fact that you have commanders that can literally just not like you for whatever reason and anything that you do you can breathe the wrong way and if they deem that it is um unbecoming of a soldier unbecoming of the NCO if you if they they can they can they can literally say anything that you do is taken away from good order and discipline and nobody else would agree but all they have to do is slap it under article 134 and that's it it's happened to me it's happened to friends of mine it's happened to soldiers of mine and how do you protect people like that you know you can't protect people like that. And the fact that not only are you in charge of my livelihood, you're in charge of my life. And I have to literally bow down and literally spread your ass cheeks and kiss your asshole to make sure I am holding my stripes and holding my position. There's honestly valid reasons on why I just, not all bad reasons, you know, not all bad reasons, but a majority of them is because I just don't like the culture anymore. That's honestly why my time here is coming to an end. Y'all, I still got years to be in. Like my time has not come to an end yet. And even when I finally settled and it was finalized and I really came to terms and I really accepted and was okay with the fact that, okay, you're done, you're getting out. That was like such a big weight lifted off my shoulders. And then when I got to the point where I'm like, okay, what do you want your life to look like on the outside? So that's kind of where I'm at in this whole transitioning portion is I'm trying to figure out what I want my life to look like on the outside of the military. How I want to feel, what I want to look like, what I want my day to look like, what I want my night to look like. That's what I am planning out right now. So it's freeing, it's freeing and I'm super excited. I'm super excited for this journey and this transition. So yeah, that's that. One thing that I have learned how to do, well, I started doing, I've had to learn how to do and start doing, let's just put it that way. It's I started being a little bit more selfish with myself um, when it comes to my physical health, my mental health, just my boundaries, my spiritual well-being, like just a lot of stuff that unfortunately being in the military you have to neglect. I kind of started really focusing in on and paying attention and if it takes away from what I have to do temporarily oh well oh well because I feel like at this point I've been in for going on seven years and I feel like I kind of put my well-being myself on a back burner a little too much in an effort to do what exactly I'm trying to impress who my leadership because I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be completely honest. I was doing this whole leader thing all wrong. I was in my leadership role doing it all wrong. I'm too busy trying to appease my superiors, the commander, the first sergeant. I was too busy trying to appease these people. But when you think about it, I'm there to lead soldiers. A part of that means I need to make sure I'm doing what I can do to protect them as well. So unfortunately, you kind of get in this position where you're gonna do what you need to do to protect your soldiers, even if it comes to risking you not looking 
the best in the eyes of your superiors and that's one thing that i had to just say honestly i don't care because i was once that soldier that i didn't have anybody there i felt like i didn't have anybody in my corner nobody was going to bat for me and that's something that's really important especially being in the career field that we're the career field that we are in we need to make sure that we're looking out for um looking out for the soldiers so when it comes to my morals and stuff like that yeah i've been being really selfish with myself if i feel like i need to do this i'm gonna do it if i feel like i'm not gonna do it and my heart's not in it i'm just not gonna do it it's crazy i've been bumping some heads but honestly i just been feeling a little bit better it's funny that people like my friends and stuff will come up to me like you just look different you're smiling more you look so much happier because i stopped giving a fuck someone was asking about finances and to be completely honest um so remember when i told y'all that i was um at Fort bragg and i was working a second job and i was making so much extra money right coming here and not having the ability to work my second jobs with the agencies that i am a part of really made me understand how little I am paid. It humbled me a little bit because for a little over a year, I've ha I haven't had to rely on my military check and even if I did, I, I, you know. Okay, let me back up. For the last few years, I've had disposable income. Like I haven't really had to rely only on the money that the army pay me because I had my second job. If I took my kids on a $405 shopping spree, I know all I gotta do is go pick up a shift and I just made that money right back. Being here and not being able to work that second job, y'all. Bitch, you bro. Shut up. <laughs> it's been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been trying. So I've been trying to be a little bit more disciplined, but at the same time, it's hard to be disciplined when I am so i'm in san antonio i don't have my kids here with me i have all the opportunity in the world to like go places and do different things and just experience kind of splurge on myself a little bit <laughs> and that's kind of what i've been doing um which i know that probably sounds a little irresponsible but hey it is what it is how wait what was i how is school going are you still going to be a nurse so i actually get this question a lot now as far as school which one are you talking about my civilian education or um rt school so rt school is going pretty good we just graduated first phase i'm now in second phase about to start clinicals and stuff like that about to study for this tmc so i can go ahead and get my state for my board license all that good stuff so it's going pretty good now as far as my civilian go my civilian schooling go am i still going to be a nurse yes i am still going to be a nurse and that's still what i'm in school for i'm um, taking classes towards those prerequisites and things like that but i won't lie to you i'm a little bit torn because i'm running into a bunch of nurses a bunch of nurse practitioners and things here that i would ask for advice and stuff like that and when they find out that I am going to school now to be a um, respiratory therapist, they're telling me to stay on that track. Not all of them, but um, most of them are telling me you, I should just stay on the respiratory therapy track. But on the other hand, I still have nurses telling me that, oh yeah, you should go ahead and be a nurse. I know people complain about it. It's hard because I didn't really know exactly what a respiratory therapist was until I came to the school and now seeing the role of respiratory uh, respiratory therapy therapists and what they do versus nursing. The lifestyle seems like it's going to be less stressful for sure. For my mental health, I feel like RT and following that course would be beneficial. But it's hard because for years I've been working towards my nursing, right? I've been working towards my nursing and I'm right here. I'm like literally right here, pretty much done with my prerequisites. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to give up. Like, that's it. Like, what, what, what was all that effort and money and time and just what was it for if I just stop now? A part of me, again, still wants to be a nurse. A big part of me still wants, I mean, I'm a nurse right now, but a big part of me still wants to go to school and get my RN and just finish out and stuff like that. 
but I still got some work to do. Good thing I won't be out for another few years because I need to figure it out. I'm hoping as I go on through my nursing, like working my second jobs on top of working as a respiratory therapist while I'm in the army, I kind of get an understanding of both of the roles and what it entails and I can kind of make up my mind and figure out what it is that I want to do from there. But hopefully as I am, as I'm working, I kind of hone in on what it is that I want to do. But I definitely don't plan on putting on putting anything on hold. So my classes for nursing and all that, I don't plan on putting anything on hold because I just I just don't want to be I don't want to get behind. I don't want to do I don't want it to get to a point where I'm like, actually, after doing respiratory therapist for a year or two, I do want to be a nurse. But now I have to kind of restart everything because I put my classes on hold for a year or two. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and Charlie Mike with everything. And then whatever happens at the end, whatever I decide to do, I have everything. So that's probably not the smartest plan, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see, how do you maintain friendships? I don't. <laughs> I don't, I'm gonna be completely honest. I have literally a few, a few, a few friends. Look at my forehead. I have literally a few friends. And honestly, I'm not even 100% sure if they even still consider me a friend because it's been so long since we've even spoken. I do have one friend though. I met her at um, uh, Fort Bragg, Sarah Williams. Y'all remember her. I ended up taking her out to Charlotte on for her birthday um, last year, which was super fun. That's that's a friend of mine that I would consider my friend. That's honestly why I wanna go back to Bragg and be, one of the reasons I wanna go back to Bragg and be around the North Carolina area because we said that we were gonna both move to Charlotte once we got out of the military, but we'll, we'll see. Somebody also asked me if I consider myself an influencer. I guess, you can say I'm considered a micro influencer, like a, 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 is there something smaller than a micro influencer? Because I feel like I would be considered that. I don't know. Do y'all consider me an influencer? Because I don't really even know exactly what it means to be an influencer. What are some of the insecurities that you hide? So one thing about me is I don't talk about my insecurities because that's where people like to pick. Like you tell somebody about an insecurity and they're just going to pick at that because now they know but mm, I guess a few things would be one my forehead for sure I talk about it and I joke about it a lot like my big ass forehead but it is what it is I mean I got a big forehead first of all I said my forehead first yes my forehead is insecurity but y'all my boobs I joke about my boobs so much being so small but I'm getting my boobs done that's honestly one of the first things I'm doing when I'm done with school and I get this bonus I'm about to go and lay up on somebody's table and I'm getting my boobs done and I don't care what anybody say because that's one of my biggest insecurities they're just flat like flat little pieces of bologna outside of a bra or anything and I, there's just nothing there it's skin there's nothing there so um, my boobs is one of my insecurities and then my forehead but also y'all my eyebrows when i was in fort Stewart, i actually got these things micro shaded not bladed so micro bladed is the hair stroke look micro shaded is the filled in makeup look and i used to wear a lot of makeup and stuff back then so it went perfectly now that i don't wear as much makeup it's just a harsh look i don't like the shape of them anymore like they're just super straight they don't fit my face so i'm actually looking for somebody to remove them and i'm even scared to do that because i don't want it i don't want scars or anything like that left behind so y'all i just i just created a problem for myself so i don't even know but those are a few of my insecurities my teeth used to be an insecurity of mine but i since got embraces and i've been working on keeping them white so it's not necessarily insecurity anymore i hope those boobs those boobs the last thing was am i dating first of all I really want to start telling y'all some stories about some of these horrible dates that I've been on because when I say I've been through it okay I was literally being dragged by the nape of my neck 
through the through the dirt by these dudes. It's crazy the things that I allow to go on in my personal love life, destroy my mental health. But yeah. Oh, I should I should do a few story times but actually yes I am dating and I'm well I'm exclusively dating someone now um, and I'm actually I'm I'm satisfied I'm happy with the situation that I'm in I can honestly say what am I looking for I'm looking for I'm gonna part my hair all of that I can honestly say I feel like this is probably hands down the healthiest relationship that I've ever been in. I have never felt so covered, so protected, so just cherished ever in a relationship, ever, ever. And I am 30 years old, y'all. And I've had lots of relationships. I was even married and I've never felt the type of affection and just genuine love, like the version of love. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's been a little minute, um, but I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied, I'm happy with the situation that I have. Um, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> But that's honestly all of the questions. No. Yeah, that's all the questions that is there. That's all the topics that's there. I am done moisturizing my hair. I'm just in a process of trying to um, style it somehow, honestly. I don't know how I want to style this. Cause y'all, I do my hair the same way. It's, it's, it's always a middle part always a middle part and I don't know what I'm doing here but I'm not keeping it that way or should I know mm -mm, mm -mm, that is not cute yeah I don't know what I'm doing with this I need to make sure I style it before tomorrow because I do go to work <laughs> tomorrow we're still doing training um, before we go ahead and jump on the floor and deal with these patients we gotta learn how to do the systems we're getting fitted for our scrubs and all that other stuff so yeah that is all i have for this video if you guys liked it go ahead and please 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 like it honestly even if you didn't like it and you're just a supporter of me can you just like it anyway can you also leave a comment i don't care if you go down and you leave like a eggplant a shit a, a peach a, a dog emoji just leave some type of comment um it really helps put my videos out there in the algorithm and make sure you subscribe so my goal for the year of 2023 is to finally hit 10,000 subs and so far we're doing okay we're doing okay just take a look if you haven't subscribed just just check look at the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet you probably just forgot to do it so go ahead this is your perfect opportunity so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video don't forget my upload schedule every monday four o'clock all right bye